အာကျမရိုးဒီနေ့မှာတော့ဖြစ်အခင်အထူးပဲအသုံးပြုတယ်ဆရာကြီးဂျယ်ရမီနယ်လ်စန်ဆရာနေဖြစ်ရခင်န
and about uh, seven or eight golden nuggets came out of the bag. Big gold nuggets like that big. And on each of the golden nuggets, there was a scripture. And the Lord said to me, these are golden insights for the next season. And I want you to release them to my church worldwide. See, I'm very excited tonight. Because Myanmar, you are the first nation that I get to release these to. I have been wow. unpacking and preaching and releasing these over the last few weeks in San Diego. And at the fire and glory outpouring, the revival that Moran and I have been hosting now for six years. But you are the first nation that I get to preach these to. Now, first of all, I want to start with the sack or the bag that the golden nuggets were in. In this prophetic encounter, the scripture Habakkuk 2.14 was written on there. And Habakkuk 2.14 says, For the earth will be filled with the knowledge of the glory of the Lord as the waters cover the sea. See, God told me, he said, in 2022, I'm going to release fresh revelation. Concerning my people, concerning nations, concerning brand new blueprints. He said, Jeremy, I want you to tell my people I want to release the knowledge of the glory of the Lord. See, a lot of people actually misquote that scripture I just read. They'll, they'll pray or they'll say, the knowledge of the glory of the Lord is going to cover the whole earth as the waters cover the sea. They'll, they'll, they'll forget the word knowledge. They'll just say, the glory of the Lord is going to cover the whole earth. But it actually doesn't say that. It says the knowledge of the glory. And this season, knowledge is going to be power. We're living in a day where God wants to give us razor sharp understanding. So we can pray with clarity and hit the mark. So tonight I'm going to share with you the knowledge of the glory that I believe God wants to release through the scriptures. I'm going to release to you the golden nuggets he showed me in the bag for this year. And the way I'm going to do it is I'm going to release a golden nugget. 
ကျွန်တော်ဘလို့ပုံစံနဲ့လုပ်သွားမလဲဆိုရေးဒီရွှေတုံးတွေပေါ်မှာဖျားခင်အလုပ်လုပ်တဲ့အရောက်ကျွန
That he himself is doing, and when you follow those instructions, you will always see breakthrough. See what I'm talking about right now? Is the seer anointing coming on people's lives? Where we start to have eyes to see the things that God wants to do. We know as we read the rest of that chapter that the Pharisees were not happy about the man who was healed that was lame for 36 years. And they tell Jesus, by what authority are you doing this miracle? And in John 5, 19, Jesus says, I'm only doing what my father shows me. And then he goes on and he prophesies, the father loves the son. And he will show him even greater things than this. That you would marvel. See, I believe that in 2022, God is going to release an anointing that will cause people to marvel. Here in a minute, I want to pray for our spiritual eyes. Because I believe just like Jesus, God wants you to see what the Father's doing. I've had many times where God showed me things. In fact, oftentimes the nations that we go to and we do our crusades come straight out of visitation. For years, we're going to Pakistan. We've seen three, four hundred thousand Muslims saved there. We've seen crazy miracles there. The blind seeing, the deaf hearing, the crippled walking. But the only reason why we actually went to Pakistan is because God gave me a, an angelic visitation and the angel came with a flag from Pakistan. I didn't know anybody in Pakistan. We didn't have the money to go to Pakistan at that moment. My coordinator for crusades thought that I was crazy when I told him we're going to Pakistan. Because when I was seeing what God was saying, he told me, you're going in two months. It usually takes eight months to set up a crusade. And our guardians have to work very hard to pull it off. And the guy said to me, you're crazy. <laughs> he said, but I believe you're a man of God. And I know when you see things that they happen. 
So he said, you go back to your room and you pray and I'll go back to my room and I'll pray. I want to teach you about prayer real quick. When you ask God to show you things, you need to learn to decree what he shows you. And then intercede and pray it through. See, when I get something in my spirit, I don't stop praying for days. For several days after this, I was decreeing and praying for Pakistan to open. Walking around my room going, I declare open doors to Pakistan. I declare finances. I declare right now God would make a way where there's no way. Before you know it, I get the phone call. My coordinator says, you're not going to believe this. He said one of the biggest ministries in the world was supposed to go to Pakistan and they had to cancel they called me today and said, do you know anybody that can come? We've already given the $40,000 to go. And in a matter of three days, we went straight into the encounter of the Lord and the open door happened and over 185,000 people got saved in that one crusade alone. See, I believe God wants to give people encounters like this. And that the father loves his sons and his daughters and he'll show them greater things. That one prophetic encounter shook that nation as we went four times. In February this year, I was in prayer. And I heard the word Pakistan again. And as we all know with the global pandemic, some nations are open and a lot of nations are closed. We had set up a crusade to go into Pakistan for March. And I heard the Lord say, go in February. And when you're led of the Spirit, some people will think that you're crazy. <laughs> I told our team, they said, are you serious? Because it was the last week of January when I told them. They said, we don't even know if people will show up. Because I gave them two weeks. But the Lord told me, he said, you must go now because in March, it will be closed down on a second wave of COVID. So instead of bringing a team or even bringing Miranda, I had to go by myself. The first night we had 150,000 people. 
But the second night over 200,000. Hundreds of thousands of people came to Jesus. Pastors and the leaders were shocked. They didn't think anybody was going to show up. But more people showed up than they did before when there was no pandemic. And as soon as I got on the airplane and left, the nation shut back down for the next six months in the lockdown. See, but when you see and when you hear what God is doing, even if it doesn't make sense, see, our plan as a ministry, we were going to take 20 people with us in March, but God said, no, February. Then we would have missed another 150,000 people coming into the kingdom. Timing words. He wants to give you timing words. There might be places in Myanmar. That he wants you to go. And you might think, wow, it's a dangerous thing to do that. You know, I don't know if I can do business as usual. But the Lord wants to give you insight to when and now. And he'll get you in places and out of places before anybody can stop anything. Before you know what, people are healed, saved, delivered, and then you're gone. So I want to pray right now that God would release revelation. That he would open your eyes. That as the father loves his sons and his daughters, that he would show uh, Myanmar what he wants to do. So, Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus that you would open people's eyes spiritually, you'd open their ears. We release that John 5, 20 seer anointing. That you would open people's eyes to the right time, the right moment, that you would open their eyes. That just like Jesus, he only ministered to that one man. He was in and out very quickly. But that man was healed, saved, and delivered. Lord, give people eyes to see and ears to hear to go after the one. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Come on, now listen, I want to I uh, look at a, a few of these nuggets here. One of the other golden nuggets he showed me is in the book of Acts chapter 10, verse 38. This is one of my favorite scriptures in the entire New Testament. Acts chapter 10, verse 38. 
because it talks about the ministry of Jesus. I believe God wants to release this anointing to you, Myanmar. He wants to release it to every leader, every pastor. Every businessman, every businesswoman. Every student, everyone that's listening to my voice right now. Old or young, it doesn't matter. God wants to put this anointing on your life. It, it says this in Acts 10 38. It, it says how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and power, and he went about doing good, healing all who were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. ဒါမနောဝတ်တို့ခန့်ညစ်တစ်ဆက်အငယ်သုံးစစ်ရှစ်ထိုအကြောင်းအရာဟူမှုကဘုရားကင်သီတန်ရှင်တော်ဝိည
জন এল গোদি লো জন হুই লাইডা খারে বুঝে নগ তুরু তা ไอ้มาชีลูเรอะญายจ่มมันคาเรโนเกตินจินยาตัวอ่ะพี่รอพยายเอวิญญาณเนาะเอ็ดโตดิจินยาวเกตินจินยาตัวจ้ะเดาจ
setting people free of the devil. Lurego nasoe chinam chingani lumiao seme. In God's presence, He wants it to rest on you. Come on, I want to pray that anointing on you right now. For the unusual miracles. Wherever you go, when you visit your family. When you go to the streets. See, this is a wherever you go anointing. Doesn't matter if it's at the workplace, doesn't matter if it's in your home, doesn't matter where. The presence of God resting on your life that gets tangible results. See, I'm turning this prayer service into an impartation service. Because sometimes the anointing of God is more caught than it is taught. Come on, if you can catch a cold from someone who's sick, I mean, no, you can catch the fire from someone who carries the fire. So put your hands out like this and receive this. Father, I thank you right now in the name of Jesus. That you'd release Acts 10.38 over your people. That you'd release the Holy Spirit and power, God. And Lord, I thank you that the manifest presence of your glory touches people now. And I thank you, God, right now that you're going to release your goodness through your people in Myanmar. And there are going to be many of those that are like secret agents that you send places where people are scared to go and they're going to bring the glory. Lord, I thank you that even in the midst of control and even in the midst of persecution, God, that in 2022, there's about to be an explosion of signs and wonders that the world cannot stop. I pray for that breaker anointing to come on people now. Release it to the people right now. Now just take 30 seconds and wait on him. Many of you are going to feel the fire. Many of you are going to feel the weight of his presence. Just wait for 30 seconds and just start off by going, come Holy Spirit. Anoint me for good works. Anoint me with your power. Let me feel your presence, God. Now just wait for 15 seconds. Thank you, Jesus. Listen, I'm going to go on to another one. Another word of the Lord for this season. I would like to wait more, but at the same time, I want to release as much as I can. Some of you need to take these prayers and even what we were just doing and afterwards, start waiting on the Lord to be anointed with His goodness. 
Listen, one of the phrases that God told me on New Year's. Was that 2022 would be a year where God raises up the friends of the bridegroom. Those who know their God and who make him known. And in John chapter 3, verse 29, there's a scripture that I believe highlights this anointing. I saw it in one of the golden nuggets. And it says this, it says, he who has the bride is the bridegroom, but the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices greatly because of the bridegroom's voice. Therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. Listen, I love this scripture. Because it's talking about friendship with God. How many of you know that Moses and Abraham were friends of God? How many of you know that in the New Testament, John was a friend of God? See, there's always a closer place to Jesus. Than where you're at right now. How many know Jesus had the 70 that he laid hands on, anointed, and sent out? But he also had a closer group, which was the 12 disciples. But out of the 12 disciples, he also had three guys, Peter, James, and John, that got to see him on the Mount of Transfiguration. But out of the three guys, there was only one who stood strong and actually was there at his crucifixion, and that was John. And when they were in that upper room at the Last Supper, and Jesus declared that one of them had a devil, Peter looked at John and said, you ask him who it is. Because they knew that John was the closest one to Jesus. He laid his head on his chest. See, I'm telling you, 2022, even with all the frustrations of, uh, of corruption and uh, control and persecution and all of these things, it is an opportunity to come closer to God than ever before. It's an opportunity to become a friend of the bridegroom. See, I love what John says in this scripture. Because really, it, what he's talking about is what intimacy looks like with God. In fact, if you look at this portion of scriptures, what happens is that all of these religious people come to John the Baptist. And 
and they say, hey, did you know the one talking about Jesus that baptized or the one that you baptize is baptizing more than you are? Luria la no di pari sheri la biro pure. Hey, Johan Dila, me me pedis and be like the Yeshu Ali, me enter on my pobi Luria pedis and be nebi. They said, What do you think about that? Me and Tikis and Epidai bloom yele. And John the Baptist says one of the most brilliant things. You pedis and see a Johan Pian Pure is the God, they count as Galip today. He said, A man can receive nothing but that which has been given to him from heaven. He said, he who has the bride is the bridegroom. But the friend of the bridegroom who stands and hears him rejoices because of the bridegroom's voice. He says, therefore, this joy of mine is fulfilled. And I love it. He goes on and he says, he must increase and I must decrease. Listen, when you're in a season and you feel like you're decreasing, you feel like doors are closed. You feel like your plans or, or your promises have been shut down. A lot of times it's in those seasons that Christ increases in your life as you decrease. But see, John understood how it worked. These religious people were trying to stir up strife and they were trying to stir up fighting. But John knew that his job was only to prepare the way of the Lord for Jesus. And though he was behind the scenes now, and Jesus had taken this, the limelight, he was showing the heart of what a true intercessor looks like. He must increase, I must decrease. And then he said this, he said, the bride is the grooms. But the friends of the bridegroom rejoice because they hear his voice. How many know the true motive of, of Christianity? Is not to draw all men onto yourself, but to draw them onto the bridegroom being Jesus. See, we get to rejoice in that we hear his voice and get to partner with him. See, every time you hear his voice and he does something, joy comes into your spirit. See, and God's looking for those that would be friends in this season. Those who do desire to be the closest to his heart that they possibly can. And I believe there's a friend of the bridegroom anointing he wants to release right now. Listen, don't just settle with being a part of the 70, being a part of the congregation. Or a part of the numbers, the, the masses of people. 
Don't just settle with being disciples, just the 12. Come on, you want to be part of the three. You want to be part of the one. See, Peter, James, and John saw the glory of the Lord when he was transfigured on the mountain. And, and John, he, he experienced the glory like none of the other disciples. He was the one on the Isle of Patmos that saw the glorified Jesus. See, I want to release this anointing over you to glorify the Son. But also to get as close to him as you possibly can. And to recognize that when everything around you feels like it's dying, it feels like it's decreasing. Actually, Jesus is increasing. So, Father, I thank you right now, God. That you would release friendship with, uh, with God. That there'd be a generation in Myanmar. Who'd be so stirred to hunger. So stirred for a passion for your presence. A generation that you would share your secrets with. A generation that you would show your glory to. Lord, release the dreams and the visions and the transfiguration encounters, God. Where we begin to see you in your glory. And Lord, I pray right now that you would release an anointing to hear the voice of God. Listen, God's going to turn the volume up on his voice. Many of you are going to start to hear things and see things. I'm telling you, Sarah, there's going to be testimonies that come out of this meeting. Where thousands of people are going to start to say, what I'm hearing and I'm having dreams. I'm having encounters with God like never before. Deep, intimate, friendship type experiences with God. We release the prophetic word of the Lord in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Listen, I want to go on to the next golden nugget. And it's found in James chapter 5, 16 through 18. Uh, sorry, 5.15. Uh, yes, John 5.16-18. Yeah. And this is what it says. It says, The effective, fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elijah was a man with a nature like ours, and he prayed earnestly that it would not rain, and it did not rain on the land for three years and six months, and he prayed again, and the heavens gave rain, and the earth produced its fruit. 
ยากุบเปียวเนาะยากุบคันจิงาอเงสะฉอกะนี่ปิรอสะชิผิดเดดิมาอีกสะควานี่ตูซาผัดเดเนาะเอเลียดีงารุเกโดโลดกะดันไน
the next day the pastor picked us up and said do you guys know what happened last night he said, Jeremy, you prophesied the winds of change. That God was going to breathe on our city. You released the winds. He said, after we dropped you off and you went to sleep, we had the highest recorded winds in the history of our nation. Blew through that city that night. We didn't, we didn't even hear a sound because we were so jet lagged, we slept through it all. Within two months, worldwide revival broke out in that region. See, when you pray earnestly and you pray uh, as uh, someone who is living right with God, you can prophesy and even the heavens will listen. You can stop war. You can stop attacks of the devil. You can rout the enemy from your family. You can release miracles. I believe God wants to anoint not just individuals, but a whole generation. Be able to pray with authority and power. So I want to pray right now that this anointing of fervent prayer would come on you. Now I know you people here from Myanmar. I've been with you. You're some of the most on fire people I know. You carry the zeal of the Lord of hosts. One of the things the Lord shows me is that there's all these bowls in heaven being filled with oil, being filled with the prayer of the saints during this time. And I see them being poured out even right now. Being poured out upon individuals, being poured out upon the nation. Your prayers are righteous and your prayers are availing much. You watch as God begins to save hundreds of thousands of people as things shift out of darkness in the next two years. Even with all the control and the government stuff and all the corruption, it's just the devil trying to hold back the harvest. But the Lord says, you will see the harvest. And I see the rains coming now. I believe that signs and wonders are going to be released even in this season. Just as the rain comes down from the heavens in a supernatural downpour. Oh, I'm telling you, God's going to open up the floodgates of Myanmar. He's going to open up the floodgates in the natural, but he's also going to open up the floodgates in the spirit. And I believe that 
I'm telling you, get ready because harvest is going to come like never before because of this time of national prayer. Sendem Pima, the Jay Tangin Kala, Ham Jarobu, Yardo Mapide, Padam Lithenry, Suit down Jinjam Pide. And so, Father, I thank you right now. For what you're showing me in the heavenly realm. That hundreds of thousands of angels are being released right now to Myanmar. And even over the Burmese people all around the world that are watching and their nations that they're at. Lord, I thank you for an anointing for the prayers and the promises to be released right now. And I thank you for revival rain, God. Lord, an internet revival. Internet no tamure. And a natural revival, God, in these next two years. I'm telling you, you're going to see things shift even in the second half of this year. And there's going to be mass souls that come into the kingdom once again. But where before it was hundreds and even thousands, in this next season, it's going to be tens of thousands gathered outdoor, being touched by the presence of God. I'm telling you, I see the outdoor festivals. I see the outdoor stuff. Uh, I don't care what any government says, and I don't care what anybody tries to say is going to happen. You watch, even by the end of this year in 2022, there's going to be a harvest anointing that hits. No tamu di jet tangent and sign in no tamu tenue upon a tail or canzale me. So, Lord, we release God. Gorod and I'll say, look, Barry, an anointing of effective, effective, fervent, righteous praying. O Gorod, tea out a suit down chetiha that avails much, God. O the go by a suit down chetty, I'm nigh a piano and pissy barry. And Lord, we release right now. Gorod and order your coom and say, look, I. A breakthrough anointing to pray. Strategies. Oh, I'm telling you right now, the, the, this next nugget, I want to get this in quickly. <laughs> I'm going faster than I normally would. Because we want to get as many of these out as we can. But I saw, the Lord showed me one of the golden nuggets. For, for 2022. Was John chapter 1. Verses 50 and 51. I'm just going to quote it for now. You can read it later. Just for time's sake. But this is where Jesus meets Nathaniel. And when he sees Nathaniel, he says, There's an Israelite without guile. And Nathaniel says to Jesus, How do you know me? And he said, when you were sitting under the fig tree, I saw you. And Nathaniel cries out, you are the savior of the world. You are the king. And in John 1, 51, 
Johan kan ni te ange ngaze ngaze tema. Jesus tells Nathaniel, he goes, you believe because of that one word of knowledge? Yeshua bera ming nga miu te mo te pa me auma miene sura piolo min yong ne hola. He said, most assuredly, I say to you, hereafter, you shall see the heavens open. And the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. And really, what I believe Jesus was saying to Nathaniel was this. He said, oh, you think because I saw you in a vision under the fig tree, the gift of the Spirit operating is amazing? Wait till I die on the cross and raise again from the dead and make my home in your heart. And the heavens are open over your life like they're open over my life. Angels of God ascend and the angels of God descend. See, God told me, He said, Jeremy, tonight I'm going to release an open heaven over people. He said, tonight I'm going to open eyes, I'm going to open ears. I'm going to release the feelings of my heart. I'm going to release the plans and pursuits for 2022. The Lord told me I'm going to release creative ideas for finances. God's going to release books. He's going to release albums. He's going to release all kinds of things that are creative. But I'm telling you, he's going to release an open heaven to where you begin to tap into the mysteries of God. I mean, know that in the Bible, it tells us that when Jesus was baptized in the River Jordan by John, it says the heavens were opened unto him. See, when, when Adam and Eve were in the garden and when they fell, the heavens became shut. They became like brass. But Jesus, when he was baptized in the river by John, he reopened the heavens once and for all. You'll never find anywhere in the Bible where it says that they were shut from that point on. See, so just like the lesson he was teaching Nathaniel, you'll see greater things than this, Nathaniel. You'll see the angels of God ascending and descending upon the Son of Man. See, I believe that's available to you tonight. Because the Son of Man, Jesus Christ, lives inside your heart. Open heaven that Jesus had. To move in miracles. To have dreams and visions and blueprints from heaven to hear God's voice. The same anointing to raise the dead. Oh, the, the same anointing of compassion and love. The same anointing with the angels encountering him, strengthening him. God wants to release this anointing tonight as we close. See, when the heavens are open over you, it's different than what's before. 
A lot of you have experienced a corporate open heaven. When you come together as a mass, as a group, there's a heaven that's open. But now we live in a day where there's restrictions and there's a pandemic and there's all these different things. And some nations, you can't gather in masses. So one of the most valuable things, one of the greatest treasures is to have the heavens opened over your life as an individual. Listen, I believe as I pray tonight, not only is God going to open up the heavens corporately as we're all on here praying, but when the prayer meeting is over and you turn off your computer, the heavens are going to be open over your home. They're going to be open over your family. Everywhere you go, you're going to live under the benefits of an open heaven. Listen, can I have five more minutes? Yes, sure. Yeah, I'm telling you, God wants to open up the heavens. And I'm prophesying to you right now. Many of you that have felt lonely. That you felt distant. You felt uh, estranged from God. He's going to encounter you tonight like never before. Many of you that have felt like you've been forgot about. The warfare has been so strong. I'm telling you, a breakthrough is here tonight, and I hear the Lord saying, I'm about to do for you what you cannot do for yourself. And I'm about to release to you a fresh open heaven of intimacy. And you're shifting out of the wilderness. Listen, I believe this is a word for Myanmar. In the spirit realm, God is going to make pathways in the desert. And he's going to release rivers of refreshing of the Holy Ghost in the dry places. See, many people all around the world feel like they're in the wilderness season. It's in that season often that God meets us. So I want to pray right now that God would open up. If there's anybody listening, watching right now, or even re-watches this, that feels like the heavens are open over, or, or that feels like the heavens are closed over you, we are going to open them up with fervent prayer right now. In fact, I'm prophesying many of you that used to feel the presence of God but felt like it's gone. 
Many of you that felt like you used to hear with clarity or see or the joy was there, but it's been robbed from you. God is about to restore. And God is about to strengthen your walk. And those of you that are on fire, God says, I'm going to put more fire on you. He says, I'm going to pour the gasoline of the Holy Ghost on your life. And you're about to carry more fire than you ever have. Oh, I see God anointing people to become signs and wonders. To be like Isaiah 8.18 that says God's people are for signs and wonders. Amongst the lost. So put your hands up. I want to pray right now. For God to open the heavens. But also for God to open the heavens over individuals tonight. And when you go to sleep, you dream the dreams of God. And when you read your word out of the word of God, it would leap off the pages into life. When you lay your hands on the sick, they're instantly healed. When you pray that the angels are released and the devils are routed. That you would walk in friendship with Jesus like never before. And in two years from now, people would look back and go, how did you get that anointing? And you'd say that when it was a dark time, I was with Jesus and I came out with a great light. came out with a fresh anointing. So let us pray. Father, I thank you in the name of Jesus for our precious friends and family in Myanmar and all around the world. Lord, I thank you, God, that you open the heavens over people's lives right now. Lord, where there's spiritual warfare or spiritual blockages, we break the power right now in Jesus' name. And we release an anointing of clarity. We release that John 1, 51 anointing. Where the heavens are open. And the angels are ascending and descending. Where revelation flows from the throne of God. Lord, I thank you. You anoint people tonight to hear your voice, to see in the spirit. Give them dreams, give them visions, give them trances, God. Take people into the throne room, I pray. Lord, just like the revelatory encounters of the Bible, Lord, I pray that you would release genuine, authentic, supernatural encounters of the Holy Ghost. And Lord, the greatest thing I pray for right now. 
that Myanmar and the Burmese people would be known for friendship with God. That their hearts would burn for Jesus. So we release that refiner's fire, we release that revelatory anointing. And we say mark people with it now in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 <laughs> Amen. Well, thank you guys for having me. Alum Jesu Dene Tanogo Chimbede Draja. We also thank you so much. Amen. Amen.